speedrunning, a concept where you beat a video game as fast as possible. A concept that I have never tried doing before. I've always thought long and hard about what my first ever speedrun would be, and after tons of searching, I have decided to do the unthinkable. To make my own Smash Bros. speedrun. Introducing the Smash Ultimate Gauntlet, a brand new speedrun I created where you have to unlock every character as fast as possible, but with a couple twists. After doing some research and testing, aka me losing the CPUs for over 2 hours, I discovered that you could have all 68 unlockable Smash characters wait for you in Challenger's Approach. Having everyone wait for you here makes it so you can unlock characters back to back instead of grinding for hours to fight them. Terribly sorry to both of the Banjo Kazooie and Min Min enjoyers out there, but this means that DLC characters won't be included since you don't fight to unlock them. This also means that I'm going to play version 1.0 of Ultimate because surprisingly enough, some of the CPUs in their battles to unlock them used to be incredibly difficult for people to beat. So difficult in fact that they even got nerfed in a later patch. If all of that wasn't enough to make this challenging, the final rule of the speedrun is to play as the character you unlock after each battle. This means that when you fight Ness and beat them, then you play as Ness in the next battle against Zelda. This then keeps going until you fight the last character to unlock. As you're about to see, this extra factor really tests your abilities of every character and will absolutely expose how garbage you are at playing 99% of the cast, like I sadly am. I attempted this first ever speedrun live on my YouTube channel, so if you enjoyed this kind of content and want to know when I attempt another run, please feel free to click all the buttons. Thanks. One. Two, three, go! Here begins my first ever speedrun of anything ever with Ness, who will always be the first character you fight when unlocking them all. I picked Kirby to start with since I figured I could defeat Ness the fastest with them, but I completely overlooked that this battle takes place on On It, so I panicked trying to get Ness off screen as fast as possible. And then I messed up tightening my splits. And I reset the runs as I can't fight Ness again until I revert back to a previous save. Anyways, as panicked as I was, I jumped right into attempt number two and started with Link this time. My smashy bro's brain really thought jab locking Ness like this was a good way to save time for some reason. But I ended the first fight with a throw after that. Next was Zelda. I had the right idea of mashing aerials to push Zelda closer to the blast zone. But I then immediately sent her the other way from me, instinctively using down throw because again, me half smashy bros brain, me like combos. I finished the fight with another throw, got Zelda, and now we fight Bowser. Despite this being the fastest match so far, I started it making a montage like a bloodthirsty idiot, but after whiffing this upbeat, I quickly spiked them. Hey, there's my man Pete, let's go! Fighting a character with multiple jumps on Skyworld is unsurprisingly very annoying, but I caught his jump here to end the game. Mori Towers completely broke my ankles after hitting this dash attack, but after a couple smash attacks, Inkling was unlocked. Up next is Donkey Kong and wait, no, it's supposed to be Villager. Yeah, so while I was doing my research to prep everything, Villager used his upbeat to recover during his fight to unlock him, and despite that, he's still somehow self-destructive. I straight up couldn't lose the match before him, so that means I either reset trying to unlock everyone, or do his fight manually, wasting an extra couple of seconds to unlock him. I, for one, care for my time and sanity, so that's why he's already unlocked this run. But because of that, I did waste time from accidentally readying up for another match and getting ready to fight Villager on the right stage. That would defeat Villager. Wait, I had to select the- Ah, oh, this is a time loss. Listen, I'm panicking. It's my first time speed running, okay? Please just understand that. Okay, no! And after defeating him, it took me several more matches to realize that the run is dead. Because I forgot to switch characters after using Pit against Inkling. So, attempt number three starts out a lot smoother with me landing a double forward air, another back throw, a forward smash, another forward smash, another forward smash, and actually selecting the right character this time. I have nothing interesting to note here because my Inkling is trash, but seeing Villager in immense pain is always very satisfying. Let's just hold on that for a bit. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh yeah, I feel amazing after that. The AI is noticeably getting more challenging with Marth landing combos and dodging me really well, until a bowling ball fell on his foot so hard that it ended him mid-stage. Young Link's fight sucks since it's next to impossible to take stocks when someone is in the water, especially if it's with Marth. You gotta get good RNG with where Young Link moves at the start and hope he goes on the turtle and not under the starting platform. It took almost a whole minute, but I got him on the right side of the stage and ended it with a forward tilt. Now, it may seem terrifying that Wii Fit immediately uses deep breathing, but since it kept her in place, all I needed was two forward airs to end the fastest game yet. Okay, Ice Climbers, shouldn't be that bad. So that's the first death in the run. <laughs> that's embarrassing. Run it back, what? Oh! I made some interesting discoveries in the match against Ice Climbers, those being that I have never played Wii Fit Trader before, and that if you lose to a character in Challenger's Approach, you don't get the rematch from for a while. 
This initially freaked me out since the splits wouldn't make any sense now, but I just assumed they would just wait behind Palutena since she's the last character you fight. Unless you lose one battle, of course, like I just did. Oddly enough, when you unlock characters in any Smash game, they all show up in a set order. So even though you're supposed to fight Captain Falcon with Ice Climbers, losing just one battle can completely change the order of events during the run. Thankfully, the game with Ice Climbers gave me plenty of time to learn Wii Fit on the fly, so I can close Falcon's fight really quick. After that battle, I ended up unknowingly beating a challenge. This one is tied to unlocking 10 characters, so there's no way to avoid that time loss to my knowledge. I swear my hit rate was a 50-50 chance against Peach with me whiffing tons of extensions, but it wasn't that long of a match. I've never really played Peach or Daisy since it's a lot harder to flow cancel when you use tap jump, so I fumbled on finishing Ryu's fight for a long while. I don't even want to know how many forwarders I missed. I didn't miss my turn-ups though, so at least there's that. Hey, I bet you've never heard a Smash player say this, I don't know how to play Shodos. <laughs> Thankfully, that didn't really matter since walk-off stages make these battles go by infinitely faster, and I didn't put up too much of a fight. I'm still annoyed about the Jigglypuff fight. She just kept camping me out in the air. Her errors were insane. I will say that hitting me into the Charmander was kind of funny, I'll give her that. After that though, I expertly outspaced her pound with an up smash, ending the game. But you know who ended up camping me out even more than Jigs? Freaking King K. Rule. I don't know why he kept using up B on stage, but after the third one, I remembered that I was playing Jigglypuff. I really hope this kind of speed run gets, uh, gets people want to try this kind of challenge. Because it could lead us to like interesting discoveries, some interesting routes, like, you know, like doing certain things, understanding CPU behaviors, all that, all that neat stuff. The Sonic CPU must have been level 9000 in his fight since he outplayed the most broken move in the entire game somehow. I was shook to say the least. We're on another walk off stage though, so just use Diet Gates of Hell and move on. I definitely would have finished Simon sooner if I actually knew how to play Sonic. But also the CPU was very weak, so they just kind of gave up after getting homing attacked off stage once. The next match was 90% missing smash attacks, and the other 10% was me eventually landing said smash attacks. Zero Suit Samus is a character that I've always wished I was good with, but I've never put that much time into playing them. Comboing out of her paralyzer definitely activates some of my neurons, but it wasn't the most optimal play with how long it took to finish up the uppy animation. Though it didn't take that much longer to finish the fight off the side. I immediately felt horrible for having to punch Isabelle a ton, until she fought back. I caught her with two uppies to end the game in a flashy way. The Monado is far more superior to the Falchion, which is why I was able to end this game in only 9 seconds. Wario's fight went really quick as well, thanks to his stage being his own downfall, losing at 54%. Ridley fell after getting up to for so long that he forgot how to recover. Ivysaur shook me up a little with how he dodged my edge guard and immediately retaliated, but all it took was two forward smashes to finish his battle. I made a grave error by not starting the battle with Charizard, but after I swapped with him, I just spammed Flare Blitz until I won. Which is how I usually play Charizard, and, and usually it works, so you know, it's pretty universal. Lucario is another character I wish I was good at playing, especially for his fight against Daisy, because I panicked so hard on this one. I kept trying to cheese her off the side with Force Pump, but you can all clearly see that didn't work. I accidentally murdered some Shy Guys, which was a bit of a time loss, and I panic rolled right into her down smash, which means that I am now down two characters. I then took way too long fighting Roy, which to be fair, should have ended right here, but, you know, multi-hit moment. Speaking of multi-hits, I got hit with literally every one of King Deity's multi-hit moves, which wasted a bit of time, but we don't miss these chairs. We hit these, we win these, Raw! I was starting to better grasp the concept of ending games fast instead of wasting time comboing CPUs with this bear chain, but of course Rob just barely survives, prolonging this fight for another couple seconds. Everyone say it with me now! <gasps> Top 10 multi-hit moments in history! Number 8! This shit! I was so confuzzled by this happening. <laughs> confuzzled? Did I write- did I legit write confuzzled? <laughs> why- why am I like this? I wrote freaking confuzzled. I was so confused by this happening that I accidentally paused my timer for a couple seconds, but I'll be sure to add it back to the final time once the run is over. I kinda know how to play Falco, but that doesn't really matter when you're cramped up inside of Luigi's mansion making it much harder to jump. Plus, Luigi was crazy good at edge guarding, which only got me more nervous. But of course, knowing my luck, none of that even mattered at all because of this. Oh! <laughs> Guys. Guys. 
There was nothing I could do about that. The only thing scarier than pre-patch Pichu is Pokemon Stadium's transformation. The mountain made it a little harder to hit Pichu for a bit, but I was able to snag the win with a forward air. Richter died really quick after ping-ponging him for a bit into a forward smash, but then I had to fight Lucas on his home stage. I am completely convinced that Richter is unplayable here because all of the angled platforms making my whip miss multiple times, and for giving Lucas the ability to recover from seemingly anywhere. I couldn't even edge guard him with holy water because of the platform not being big enough. I experienced yet another multi-hit moment, and yet for some reason Lucas was just freaking invincible the whole game. I kept throwing him, but that didn't work. I even threw him into the platform here, did it again after he teched, but of course the angle was perfect for him despite missing this tech on the second throw. To top it all off, I lost by straight up running into his up smash like I'm playing this game day one. And yes, it was very embarrassing. I don't even know what's worse at this point in the run, having to fight Diddy Kong or having to keep playing Richter. This stage was also definitely not built with the Belmonts in mind, and Diddy Kong was more than aware of this since he kept going on this log. I was so fed up with all the time he was wasting that I tried down airing onto the log, and it surprisingly worked, but of course it sent Diddy Kong in the worst direction possible. I have no clue how this forward tilt connected, but man I was glad I got that fight done. I seriously cannot even begin to count both how many up smashes I missed and how many that I hit that didn't kill in the Meta Knight fight. I'm not good with Diddy Kong at all, but look at this sexy banana combo I hit here that for some godforsaken reason doesn't kill. Hilariously, the most tragic thing about this match was that I thought I would snap the ledge after hitting my barrels on stage, so I looked at my phone for a split second, only to realize that I somehow missed the ledge, so I self-destructed. I feel very embarrassed in the moment, and I move on to the next fight. So Snake's Battle has the most unique challenge of the walls boxing you in, and having to use the top platform if you want to KO him as fast as possible. The problem, however, is his CPU is just good enough to tech the walls if you hit him into it, and even worse, attack instantly out of the tech. So obviously you don't want to waste time breaking down the walls, but it is really risky to fight him on the top platform since he can kill you early just as easily. Something else I learned in this fight is that you NEED to beat someone with Diddy Kong as soon as possible because he's absolutely sucked when Ultimate first released. So the more fights you have to play him for, the more time you're definitely gonna lose compared to playing literally anyone else. Or else, like, I don't know, you, you're Tweak or something. I, look, look, it's just, it's not easy. Do yourself a favor. Be good. Don't beat me. Be better. Win. Now with that in-depth explanation out of the way, here's how misspacing an up air cost me the game. Ooh. Ha! Ah! That is not okay! All I can say after all of that is that thank goodness Ganon Sage is a walk-off. And same for Corrin. Their fight was the uncontested fastest match in the entire run thanks to that. So nice to me. Yeah, nice pin! Nice pin! Idiot! For Mega Man, you really want to end this fight super fast, or else you have to deal with a yellow devil blobbing all over the place, which of course wasted a ton of time. I'm still surprised this down smash hit, but we gotta take these. We just have to in this instance. I'm desperate here. I don't know what hurt more about this game. Me having no idea how to play Mega Man, or me not knowing how to fight Bayonetta. Pick your goddamn poison. Toonling's fight thankfully didn't take too long despite my lack of Bayonetta experience. I got so freaking lucky when I tapped into Rosalina's down smash here, since her Luma hit me first, essentially saving me from losing at that point. Being in a complete panic though, I whipped a grab here, but I then immediately got the grab to end the game. Incineroar wasted some time in their match by constantly jumping on the railings, but I was able to end it soon after I kicked them out of a ring. Sheik actually gave me a freaking heart attack in her fight. If she just did one more forward air here, I would have absolutely lost right there. I don't know why she was so merciful in that moment, but regardless, I was incredibly thankful. So thankful, in fact, that I gave her a great big hug and then immediately broke her spawn. Moving on, Olimar's fight was really easy since it combined two of my favorite things, fast characters and walk-off stages. Auto-scrolling stages, however, are a double-edged sword. If you're fast enough, you could just land a big hit or a fast combo against the CPU, but if you miss anything, then their kill switch could activate and end you just as easily with any hit. Also, Pac-Man just loved being in the center of the stage at all times, so it was hard to get them close enough to the blast zone, especially with Olimar. He also just kinda gave up after I hit him here, but that also cost me a few seconds to finish the job. Let's be real for a moment and all agree that no one cares about what happened in the Pac-Man vs. Dark Samus match. It was incredibly boring. 
Instead, let me explain to you all why these matches appear to be taking so long. I was able to set up the speedrun by using Yuzu, a Nintendo Switch emulator. It works flawlessly for tons of games, but Smash Ultimate is definitely not one of them. It could run well if you install all the game shaders, but the only reliable way to do that to my knowledge would be to play as every character and use everyone's entire moveset so that the emulator can process all of the different animations. I obviously couldn't do that in advance since I can't play as anyone else besides via base 8 until you start the run, so that meant all I could do was hope the slowdown caused by all the shaders wasn't too bad. But sadly, hoping wasn't enough. As the run progressed, it started to take longer for shaders to load when using new characters and moves, and for loading screens to start and end. So things like loading the character select screen, going into a match, and seeing the unlock screen got progressively more and more unbearable. All I could do was sit there and waste precious seconds praying for you two to load everything as fast as it could. Anyways, rant over. This next match sucked. I got Dark Samus and immediately steamrolled Wolf with a JV2. Oh shit, Mr. Game Watch got strings. What was that? He's playing turbo mode. Yo! Game & Watch went turbo mode on the trampoline, which made it next to impossible to hit him for 90% of the match, but that made breaking his non-existent back all the more satisfying. Can it work? Can it work? Are you serious? Please, help me mourn for this whiffed nine hammer with a moment of silence. Okay, I'm over it. I got jump scared by Robin's Nair, but miraculously survived just for Robin to roll into the blast zone while the stage transformed. I don't play Robin at all, so I'll spare you all from having to see my horrible gameplay. The upbeat kill here, though, was kind of funny. Cloud's match was honestly kind of insane. The CPU was doing combos that I've never seen any Cloud player do before. It's in time, wait. This dude just did. Uh I am speechless right now. And he even got the summon materia immediately when it spawned in. Though by sheer luck, Ifrith made Cloud self-destruct by physically pushing the stage away from him mid-recovery. I gotta say that is probably one of the biggest betrayals I've ever seen in gaming. I did not let Duck Hunt play the game. That is all. Dude, who the heck plays freaking Duck Hunt? Seriously, the moment the match started, I was perplexed by the thought of anyone playing this character voluntarily. All I can say is shout out to Ken for whiffing a Shoryuken right next to the blast zone. We take those! Though after I got back to the character select screen, I immediately retracted my shout out since loading Ken literally crashed the game. I lost almost a minute and a half just rebooting Yuzu and the forever expanding number of shaders until I finally got to Greninja. Everyone say thank you to Kalos for ripping the Ken bandaid off quickly and painlessly. I completely steamrolled Chrome the Greninja in this fight. I honestly forgot how cool this character is. You know what's worse than a fake kill screen? Wasting precious seconds in a speed run because of a fake kill screen. I ended the match very quickly after that though, so it was only a minor inconvenience. Bowser Jr's match was extra laggy for some reason, but you know what, that wasn't even the worst part. No, the worst thing about this match was that I was playing Mewtwo. Oh yeah, uh, his jab isn't nearly as good, my tail just got hit by the propellers. <sighs> I... I don't even want to talk about what happened to Dr. Mario. They really just charged down Smash, right in front of my face, twice. Let's just move on to Palutena. Nothing really crazy happened in this fight. All I really did was land two forwarders and back airs, and then boom, it's done. I beat Palutena, the final character to unlock, thus ending the first ever Smash Ultimate Character Gauntlet. Supposedly. Remember all of those characters I lost to when I tried to unlock them? Yeah. Well, here's where I found out that they actually don't go back to challenges approach to wait for you. As you can all clearly tell, I did not prepare for this. Oh my god, they don't go back to chal- No! No! They don't wait! They don't go back in the line! They just leave the store! I was scrambling trying to figure out how to get them all back there as fast as possible. I tried playing one-stock matches, resetting the emulator, and even completing classic mode, but it seemed like nothing was working. Until I looked back in the menu to see Challenged Approach's heavenly glow, for some reason, because I didn't know what was happening. So what I did find out after that though, was that there's a cooldown you have to wait when you lose to a CPU in their battle to unlock them. And once the cooldown is done, everyone you lost to will be back to be challenged. I had no idea about any of this, and there was no indication of there being a timer, or of the characters I lost to returning to be fought. Honestly, if it weren't for my live chat, I would remain completely clueless, wasting even more precious time running around like a headless chicken. For reference, if you try the speedrun and lose a match, play for about 10 minutes and everyone you lost to will be ready to fight again in the challenge's approach. 
After wasting 15 minutes panicking, we finally get the run back starting with Fuliji. I was incredibly nervous with this newfound knowledge of losing just one of these rematches, costing me another 10 minutes of waiting. So you know, I absolutely camped the frick out of Fuliji until I eventually won. I don't know how to play Fuliji, but something I do know how to do is side B. I also don't know how to play Daisy. But that's fine because I got lucky enough to pull a stitch turn up and then immediately threw it at the wrong ice climber. Pumbo then proceeded to play a freaking mini game that involves him slamming himself into the stage until I could rebound off of it like it was a game of basketball. But I sadly missed every single shot. I'm just embarrassed in all honesty, which unsurprisingly has happened a lot in this video. I really let this cringe ass Nene baby live to almost 250%. So if you've ever watched any of my Smash videos, you'd know that I play a ton of characters. Except, coincidentally, literally every single character I felt to unlock in this freaking speedrun. Especially including the cringe ass Nene climbers. Let me tell you something though. Any amount of experience with this character would have never prepared me for Dr. Mario's stethoscope literally flashing my life into my eyes with every hit he landed. I especially wasn't ready for this absolute juke that was Dr. Mario actually being able to recover. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, yeah. What the frick? Oh and then they proceeded to self-destruct five seconds later. Yes, whatever, it's just fine, yeah, take that. In an attempt to end Mennonite's fight quick, I quickly cycloned, but missed, which of course led to him back airing me. If he didn't get hit by my recovery here, I was actually dead. I'm pretty sure it's because hit and hurt boxes get bigger if they collide with each other. I then immediately cycled again and won the match. I should have been able to easily ladder Snake with Meta Knight, except for patch 1.0 buff suddenly kicked into overdrive and had Snake tech literally everything and was even almost able to kill me off of one. Thankfully, he missed tagging this down tilt and we moved right along to the next match. Did I mean to input a forward air here? No. Am I gonna act like it was completely intentional? Absolutely. And at long last, I made it to the true final battle against Bowser Jr. I picked Lucas on the character select screen and then proceeded to absolutely decimate this stupid little turtle. Take it, we're done! We're done! Yes! A hundred, a hundred, a one hour, 38 minutes, 13 seconds. And that is the first ever Smash Ultimate Boss Rush Speed Run. My day one Lucas was schnasty. But what's even schnastier is how I'm now officially done with the first ever Smash Ultimate Character Gauntlet. And how by default, I am also the world record holder for this speedrun. But hey, I'm sure that title won't last true for long because I'm gonna attempt this speedrun again someday and maybe even live long enough to see some other players attempt this challenge. Hopefully they don't beat my time and rub it in my face on Twitter. Or even worse, subscribe to my YouTube channel, like this video, and ring the notification bell. Oh goodness gracious, that would be horrifying. <laughs>